think we have almost everybody? Okay. Uh, what I thought I'd do this afternoon is take a look at market markets and so uh, an economics topic and then do advocacy and if we have time talk a little bit about production. So that's what I have in mind. Uh, four areas of inquiry in terms of markets, uh, types of markets, you ever play a game called Monopoly? Yes. Well, so you know all about markets. No. Right? Um, yeah. Market attributes. What, in fact, why does this matter anyhow? Why do we care? Uh, how something called market structure affects the way that firms work. And then how does this all apply in healthcare? So that's where I'm headed with this. There are four or five basic types of markets. Did you take Econ 101 way back when? Yes. Did you, did you talk about perfect competition? Remember that? Perfectly competitive markets? No? All right. We'll study them a little bit. Uh, competitive markets, many small buyers and sellers, people compete. And the economic theory is that when people compete hard, they try to be efficient, and that brings price as low as you can get it. So that's a, that's a perfectly competitive market. In a monopolistically competitive market, people compete, but they don't necessarily compete based on price. Uh, do, does Harvard and Robert, do Harvard and Robert Morris compete? Well, kind of they do. You could go there or here, right? You say there's no competition. I think it's some competition. <laughs> it's a different kind, okay? The competition is based on perceptions of quality and di difference. So that Harvard is sort of in one league, Robert Morris is another league, right? They each appeal to a market segment, they could compete, but they don't. Monopolistic competition. The monopoly aspect of it is, let's see, are the Pittsburgh Steelers a monopoly? Yes. Okay, you've made my point. They're not, but you think they are because there's nothing like them in the world, right? Right? If the market's entertainment, right, the Steelers compete with the Pittsburgh Symphony. <laughs> if the market's football, the Steelers compete with the Pittsburgh college team for fans. Okay, it's not on the field competition, right? It's competition for the marketing, right? So competition for fan dollars. Yeah. Yeah. Even the NFL's not a monopoly. Okay? But people think it is. That's the monopolistic competition part of it. It's so based upon perception? And exactly. What's Differentiation, we call it. Okay? Oligopoly. Heard the term? Is Highmark a monopoly? Yeah, who's from Pittsburgh? Anybody? Oh, this is cool. Philadelphia. Okay. Is Independence Blue Cross a monopoly? What? Is Independence Blue Cross a monopoly? Is Capital Is Capital Blue Shield a monopoly? No. Why? Aetna has 15% of the market in Philadelphia. Well, you can get another insurance company. Right. Aetna has 15% of the market. IBC has 85%. Between the two of them, they have it all. They're oligopolists. Two biggies. But a lot of the big institutions, like Lehigh has their own insurance. Sure. And Reading has their own insurance. Okay, now, different market. Okay, the Lehigh Valley. 
yeah, they, those hospitals have a PHO. And they have what, Berkshire? I think it's Berkshire. Okay. Does Capital Blue Cross market in your area? I don't know. Yeah. Capital Blue Cross and Highmark markets in your area. Okay. Is that competition? Not quite, getting closer. If you have two firms split in the market, it's an oligopoly. Two or three. Okay? And then monopoly you know about, right? One firm. Is UPMC a monopoly in this area? There's another hospital system called Allegheny West Penn that's failing. And they've sued them for antitrust, by the way. Hmm? Bank of America, a monopoly? Prove it to me. How so? What do you mean? Well, I don't know what their percentages are across the country, but they seem to be the sharp in the bank world. You know, although this last one's cost them. Mm -hmm. They don't have a monopoly yet, but they're headed there, is what you're saying. Okay. It did, and they broke it up. <laughs> yeah, Independence Blue Cross tried to merge with Highmark, and they had hearings. And I showed up and said, well, perhaps you shouldn't let them merge. Perhaps you should break them both up. I got the, in the packet, I put the testimony in just for fun. Yeah. I'm on their favorite person list. <laughs> yes. I'm a, I've also got a new lawsuit against them. But a perfect competition, I'm thinking back when I was a young teenager, they, they were having gas wars in our yeah. town, and it got down to 25 cents a gallon. I didn't think you were that young. <laughs> I just gave my age away. Huh? Um, I remember that. that example of sure. Okay. Sure. And in fact, we'll talk a little more. Perfect competition. For perfect competition, Everything, all the goods that are sold have to be the same. So gasoline is gasoline, right? Now they used to put additives in gasoline, and remember that they would say that you know our gas has this type of thing. It eliminates engine knock. That's trying to take it from perfect competition to monopolistic competition. Okay. Uh huh. And there's a reason for studying this stuff. All right. I don't want to bury the lead. Okay. If you can differentiate yourself, you can take yourself from a competitive environment where you're competing based on price into an environment where people differentiate what you have as higher quality and you can charge more. Okay. Now, a BMW and what, what's something small and cheap? Kia. Kia. Are they competitive? No. It's monopolistic competition, right? And in fact, the world goes upside down in monopolistic competition. You see, because if you're running BMW, you don't want to compete based on price. You want to try to push the price higher. If you're an open heart surgeon, would, have I said this to you before? Would you go to a discount open heart surgeon? <laughs> Why? You think because if they have to discount, their quality is not as high, right? This is not always true. No. Yep. Yep. Who lives in, near Williamsport? Williamsport? Yeah. Susquehanna. Yeah. A monopoly. Mm -hmm. They've bought up everything, haven't they? No. But they're not in Williamsport, they're not over in, in Williamsport. no. That's, and then stocks for stocks. Right, they're over in Wilkes-Barre. Yeah. They bought that hospital. And they bought, they have, they own Sunbury, Lockhaven, and uh, Berwick. And they're looking at buying Wilkes-Barre now. Are, are they a monopoly where they are? I sort of think, I don't, I guess it's two of them. I guess it's yep. more like off of the Oligo, yep. CHS and Geisinger. Yep, that's the yeah. oligopoly. Mm -hmm. Okay, but in Williamsport, y'all got a monopoly. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. If you want to work for a hospital, you work for them. You say it's just for counties. Yes. Any health systems. That's right. Everything except one hospital, two hospitals. That's right. And, and uh, just for any hospital. Any health systems are more profitable than everything else. Mm -hmm. So in a perfect competition, it's like the competition keeps each other in check. 
Absolutely. Absolutely. That's how I found like when I lived in Montana, it was possible. And while the nurses would go wherever, you know, so they actually kept it pretty balanced. It was actually nice to work in that environment versus where I am now, where it's monopoly. You got a monopoly? Yeah, monopoly. We'll talk. Monopolists act one way. Oligopolists can act in one of three ways. And we'll If you have an oligopoly, we'll talk more, but two oligopolists can collude or they can compete. Now, if the oligopolists compete, what happens? They have a price war, prices go down, their profits go down. If the oligopolists collude and you don't even have to do it by agreement, you can price like a monopolist. Now, Highmark, anybody read about the Highmark stuff in Pennsylvania? This is great to have class with anybody from Pittsburgh. <laughs> Usually I have to do Pittsburgh metaphors. <laughs> Highmark has a 60 percentage market share in Pittsburgh. UPMC has about 70% of the hospital market share. UPMC started a health insurance plan that competes with Highmark. And Highmark, a couple of months ago, announced that the other big hospital in town, Allegheny West Penn, which is in financial trouble, Highmark said, okay, you're going to compete with us in insurance. We're going to buy the other hospital. So now the Blue Cross Insurance Company is going to own the other major hospital. The major hospital chain Right, University Hospital owns an insurance company now, and they're they're fixing to fight. How is that not approved? Uh, it is. Insurance company can own a hospital. Yep. That's, that's not a conflict of Sure it is. So what? Geisinger does. Uh, well, yeah, Geisinger. Well, Geisinger is different. Geisinger is an old-fashioned staff model HMO, a la Kaiser. So. We should probably talk about Geisinger some, or, or this model some. It's it's real important part of health economics. The the feeling with the old staff model HMO was if you have an insurance plan and a hospital and you own the doctors, you have it all together. That's called vertical integration, and that's the way you perfect the monopoly. That's the feeling. You got to own the doctors, and and Geisinger does own the doctors, right? <laughs> yes, more and more hospitals are doing it. No. Yet, not yet. But may. The last market I claim to you, and people don't call it that, okay. government. I claim to you that government health care is a market. And you know it well. Anybody here work for the VA? Ah, that's unusual too. Usually we get two or three people working for the VA. Okay? Yeah. But there is a piece of this that's you know the government provides goods and services. If the government does it, I call that a government market. And that operates differently from the others. It's not quite monopoly in the way you know it. Okay? So, the competitive ideal, white right wing republicanism. Ronald Reagan, who else we got out there? Milton Friedman, uh, Rush Limbaugh. Okay? You know the type. Glenn Beck. Glenn Beck, that's right. <laughs> In a perfectly competitive market, you get the best outcome po that's possible for consumers. Why? Because competition drives price to the lowest possible level. If, we both, if we're both operating a firm, you guys and me, we have two firms, and we're in competition, and we have the same structure, no competitive advantages, 
Okay, same input costs. Right? We're going to price exactly down to cover our input costs. Because if I'm, if I'm charging a dollar more than input costs and you price the input costs, you drive me out of business. So in a competitive market, people price as low as they possibly can, which means that they price at a level which just covers their cost. And in fact, the pricing rule in a competitive market is you price at the level where your marginal costs equal your marginal revenue. Which means zero profits. Which means that consumers get it cheaper. You're not paying profits to, to the firms. This is theory, by the way. Okay? That's the problem with Rush Limbaugh, Milton Friedman, etc. Okay? And we'll talk in a minute. If you can become more efficient than anybody else in a perfectly competitive market, you win, all the rest of them lose. Okay? Great example, this last week. Anybody got an iPad? Anybody have a Hewitt Packard touchpad? You're laughing. They're gone. They're gone. Right? Pulled the plug. Couldn't compete. That's the market. Sayonara. What's that? It's gone. They stopped, they stopped selling it. They sold the last ones they had for $100 a piece. Huh? You have one? Oh, don't, get, don't, don't, don't keep it. It'll be a collector's item in 40 years, I swear to God. Really? Keep it in the box. 30 years from now, you can sell it on eBay for $10,000. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Inefficient suppliers exit the market. Consumers win because they get the lowest price and because businesses fight to do it better. Good service counts in a competitive market. And if you've got a firm that isn't given good service, you know they're not competitive. Hmm? I'm going to ask this question. I think it's kind of like the chicken and the egg. Okay. If you've got hospitals, yep. and you've got insurers, which is the revenue source for the hospital, yep. how can you have any... Who's the efficient supplier? How can the hospital be an efficient supplier when their peer source wants to control what they pay. Two pieces to that. That's a great question. For the hospitals to have incentives to be efficient, they have to be competing with other hospitals. They're not. Okay? Now, you, but you're on to something really important, and that is, Anybody here with a hospital that started up a nursing home? I have been. I had one. What's happened to the nursing home usually? That's good. Yeah, I shut mine. Cause, because you see, the way you run a hospital and the way you run a nursing home are two different things. And if you pay the nurses in the nursing home the way you pay nurses in the hospital, you can't compete. And so you, you may be able to run a health insurance company. I am pretty sure you can't run a hospital if you run it the way you run a health insurance company. In Ohio, we, we sit below the Mecca, the Cleveland Clinic at the University Hospital. Oh, yes. <laughs> There's like this dividing line at Cuyahoga County. But in, our, in the city of Akron, we've got Sumacare, which has their own insurance product, and yet we've got competition with Akron General, who also at one point, they were about 50% of the market. They may be less than that. 
What was the, what was that hospital originally? Akron General Medical. Yeah, it, it was Akron General. What's the other one? So it was City and St. Thomas. That's what, St. Thomas is what I was thinking. So City and St. Thomas merged. And they're now Sioux Healthcare. <laughs> okay. With an insurance company, Sioux so Care. Yeah, I, I I did a legal case in Akron in 1975. <laughs> Mark Ravenscraft was the county commissioner, head of the county commissioner. You remember him? Can I tell my war story? I, I, I tore an Achilles tendon playing basketball. And so Ravenscraft calls up and he says, you gotta come do the certificate of need for this nursing home. Yeah. So I started out life litigating the COA. So I said, no, I can't come. I've torn my Achilles tendon. I'm on crutches. I'm taking no new business. So he says, that's even more reason you got to come. So I had my secretary drive me down, went up into his office. Here he is in a wheelchair. <laughs> he said, you shouldn't complain about it. It's permanent with me. OK. The problem is, with the vertical integration piece. First of all, the market I've talked about, Pittsburgh, you're gonna have two insurance companies and two hospitals. The pressure on them to collude and not be efficient is huge. Why is that? Because if they fight, none of them makes a profit. So that's really their competition, That's why I claim that the fighting will, will stop. <laughs> I do worry about hospitals running insurance companies. I've never seen it work well. What about, that's just a little bit off of the subject, but um, what about um, hospital um, health care companies like CHS that are publicly traded mm -hmm. and that the stockholders are making decisions for that cost? Like, What's yes. wrong with that? There's something wrong with that. They're, they're making the decisions for care. I mean, or for the big decisions that are going to be made towards your care. And then we have nothing to do with health care. True. Follow it through. What bothers you the most? I guess that decisions are going to be made on money. Correct. I mean, which is okay. But aren't they all? To a certain extent, yes. But, but you're onto something good, but yeah. take it a level deeper. You're really, you're right there. Quality or price profit, right? Yeah. If you can dump quality to raise profit, is there an incentive to do it? Yes. That's what worries you, isn't it? Because we can't see quality, but we can see profit. Right? No margin, no mission? Okay. In perfect competition, that demand curve, remember supply and demand? Those curves? The demand curve is perfectly flat. Why? Because everybody has to charge the same price. If anybody charged a higher price, they'd be out of the market. So instead of getting a demand curve that looks like this, it's perfectly flat. In a perfectly competitive market, you will have one price. That's it. No matter how much gets produced. In order for a market to be perfectly competitive, did I do this in May? If I did, I want to repeat it. Okay? There have to be many small buyers and sellers. Why? Because in a competitive market, people are price takers, not price makers. So if you've got one big firm fixing price, it's not competitive. So many small buyers and sellers, homogenous products, 